And we're back, <laughs> going insane with triangle strategy. If I'm being real, I I do feel like I'm slowly losing my mind <laughs> with every episode I record of triangle strategy now, just because <laughs> it's too much triangle strategy. We're so close to being done with this. And yes, I love the game, but <laughs> it's too much triangle strategy now. <laughs> we're on episode who knows what of triangle strategy, almost at episode 50, I think. And we're still not done. <laughs> There's still three more episodes at least to record, probably four or five. And I still gotta make the review video for this too. <laughs> okay, sorry, I just needed to get that off my chest real quick. But yeah, we're back with triangle strategy. I don't even remember what happened last episode. By the way, we're still keeping the the deathless run going surprisingly enough we made it through the um which battle was it that gave me trouble this time around i think it was turning in the Rizal battle where you have to work together with rufus to defeat the Rizal. that battle was annoying because rufus was on the opposite side of the map and we had to try and keep him alive while also trying to keep up our own units alive while they were dealing with with land, sky, a bunch of bow users. That battle was rough, but we somehow made it through, thankfully. Then the next semi-tough battle we had was the um, Avlora battle. And by the way, yes, we did do the same the same choice we did in the true ending, where we um, went with Roland's plan and fought Avlora in a really cool battle. And yes, it was tough, but we somehow made it through that as well, thankfully. I will say that... <laughs> This deathless run has cost me nearly all of my panacea pellets. I probably shouldn't have done this deathless run until the new true ending run I said I was gonna do, which I'm not even doing this time around until we get like a stream set up or anything. I think I mentioned that before, but yeah, I, th I should have left this deathless run for later because look at how many freaking, freaking panacea pellets I have. I have freaking 25. I had like 40. I nearly had 40 panacea pellets before all of this. I hope I really don't need more panacea pellets in the oncoming battles. I already know I do, but come on, have mercy on me. There's not enough panacea pellets in the world to get us through this. Like, we only get to buy, like, from shopkeepers that are in towns in an investigation portions of the game, you can only buy one. And from Lionel, I think you can only buy like three or five. So please, please have mercy game. No more, no more panacea pellets uses. I don't think I'm gonna make this deathless run if I'm being honest, but we'll try. Uh, aside from that, let's get the bloating done and you know, uh, go visit the Rosellum village again and finally recruit Travis. And after that, uh, the next episode we'll record will, I think, be Benedict's Path. The last pass we have to do. Okay, so I guess I'll see you guys once I'm done with all this convincing and stuff. See you in a bit. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, I did use um, Trish a bit more for a couple of the battles I had. And let me tell you, she's pretty good. She's not incredible, but it's very satisfying to use her flaming arrow attack. Especially against those um, Falcon Knight units. It was so satisfying defeating those guys with uh, Trish in the, in the Aurora battle. So incredibly satisfying. As well as mages, because she, she puts in work with those guys. Uh, but aside from that, she's a pretty alright unit. I haven't used Act Twice yet. I haven't used Leap all too much, but it is, you know, situational as well. But you know, pretty fun unit to use every once in a while, not gonna lie. I think I ended up using Giovanna for like a battle or two as well. I think for the battle where we face off against, um, against, uh, Talus and Erica, and she's there. I was gonna try and say she's not that bad, but <laughs> no, she's still pretty bad. She's good at going in. Okay, no, I can't even say that. Never mind. Just pretend that this, <laughs> pretend this didn't happen. Nothing happened about Giovanna. Oh no! Okay, I gave you guys the wrong info. Last episode, we had the battle in the arena. That's what happened. Yeah, um... So we agreed to source Lace illegal salt trade, went to Zvarag, but didn't reveal Roland's identity. So he was like, I'm not going to give you the money you deserve, being the cool guy that he <laughs> that he is this time around. And so we went back empty-handed, but Claris, uh, surprisingly enough, knew about a secret arena where we could go earn the money we lost in that deal with Zvarag. So we got to fight um, Rufus and had some pretty decent fun fighting him in that arena battle, if I'm being honest. I think, if I remember correctly. It has been a while since I last recorded that, so I don't remember that perfectly anymore. But yeah, that happened. Travis's Thieves, then. The scouts confirm the rumors. The Rosellan village really is deserted. Can't believe 
believe the wolf forts actually handed him over to Hyzant. Those heartless bastards! Well, now the village is ours for the searching. We can take our time finding that treasure. Don't tell me you actually believe there's treasure there, Pa. It matches the book, but still. Of course I believe it. That book came from the archives themselves. No doubt we're gonna find something incredible there. Then we can wash our hands of this whole business. You mean, give up thieving? <laughs> That's crazy talk, Pa. Whatever happened to your pride as a bandit? Loot's just a measure to even greater treasure. Ain't that what you always say? It used to be, but Norzelia's changing. There's fighting wherever you look, and we shouldn't be taking risks we don't have to. Do you understand, Trish? I understand, all right. You're nothing but a coward, Pa. I don't care if you give up. I'll become an even greater bandit all on my own. Fine. Have it your way, then, you fool. I don't need your permission. Boss, are you really gonna let her walk away like that? I'd tell her she reminds me of someone, but I doubt she'd listen. First, we gotta find that treasure. Let's make for the Rosellan village. The members of House Wolffort, having earned momentary respite after reclaiming the capital, decide to go their own ways. Roland remains in the capital to deal with his political opponents. Benedict returns to Castle Wolffort to visit the ailing Lord Simon. And Serenoa and Frederica, hearing reports of thieves in the deserted Rosellen village, head over to investigate. Chapter 15, Part 2, In the Wake of a Dream. So did she actually leave the gang or is she just, you know, gone for a short bit? I'm assuming she's just gone for a short bit and she's gonna appear back when the, uh, when we actually defeat her dad. Something else I forgot to mention real quick. Uh, spices have been my best friend in these ru deathless runs so far. <laughs> because let me tell you, the amount of times that the uninvigorating, uninvigorating spice came in clutch against, you know, tough bosses is insane. As well as the, um, unprecise spice, like, whenever we're using, like, Milo and, um, Groma and Anna. Those really help out with their evasion as well. Alright. Having heard rumors of bandits in the area, Sereno and the others head to the desolate Rosellan village. It appears the bandits have yet to pillage this place. Let's look around, just to be sure. This theme always gets me, <laughs> no matter how many times I listen to it. We cannot let harm come to this village. Let us find out whether those rumors of bandits were true or not. Oh, we do got new items here. Hello. Large Thunderstone times two. All right, that's that's something. If I remember correctly, I think Piccoletta actually killed some units this run in the Avora battle <laughs> using a a Thunderstone in the water. So I guess never, you know, never take those stones for granted. Never know when they come might come in clutch. Endurance earring. Hello, what are you? I think this is new, right? Decreases damage taken when HP- Oh, hello! Oh my god. We could have had this the ho this whole time. We could have gotten this ages ago. That's broken. Not really, but you know, that's insane. Oh, so many units could have used that. I have so many units with Desperate Defense, I think. Don't you have it? Yeah, you have Desperate Defense. 
uh, Everidor could have used that, he, and he's already an incredible unit. I don't think he has this for defense, actually, but still would have been incredible, you know? Oh my god, he does! Actually, I wonder, does it stack, or is it just, you know, you can only get one? Oh my gosh, according to GameSpac, it, it does stack. Hello! <laughs> that makes, okay. That makes Aurora so much better! Oh, I want to try that out so badly. <laughs> but we only have a couple battles left. Dang it, we should have done this ages ago. Why do I waste my time getting Cordelia? I don't think we even got anything good out of that, right? Uh, I should have just gotten Travis and Trish ages ago. Dang it, Cordelia. Oh well, whatever. Disenchanting Spice, thank you. I just realized how sad this place is now. <laughs> like, this is really depressing to look at without the, the Roselle and all here. I forgot how much I hated turning in the Roselle. I literally skipped through that whole battle and chapter thing when we turned them in. So I didn't pay too much attention to it this time, but... Dang. Hey, cat. Are you as sad as I am? I'm gonna take that as a yes. Cure all pellet times two was found, but your inventory... Okay, then whatever. Ooh, money. Hello. Oh my god, panacea pellet. Yes! Too bad it's literally gonna be used up in this battle. Ooh, more money. Thank you. Okay, I think that should be all the items, so... Time to talk to everyone. We've got to do something about those bandits so those poor Rosel have a home to return to. Oh, okay, short and sweet, Eridor. I've looked inside the houses, but everything seemed untouched. There's no one here because of us. When I think about it, perhaps Sylvia was just as desperate as us. I don't think I've ever seen Frederica so sad before. Could you speak to her, Lord Serenoa? Perhaps you could cheer her up. I haven't any words to console her, I'm afraid. I believe you could do a better job than I. I understand how she feels. Seeing the village like this brings a pain to my heart as well. Nothing I say will bring the Roselle back here. We must act in quickly. I'm gonna go with the middle one. As it does mine. But we must face the truth and think carefully about our next steps forward. All of us. You're gonna break my heart, aren't you, Farika? What are you gonna say? Oh no. Not the silent treatment. She hasn't said a word since we arrived. Perhaps I should say something. On second thought, perhaps I should leave her be. I don't know if that's the right choice for this one. We should seal the windows and doors later to prevent both thieves and beasts from entering. Eh, I don't know about that one. Jerome put his faith in us and we shan't disappoint them. Oh god. None of these answers are really good, IMO. I think the top one or bottom one works best, but this pains me. Let's go with the bottom one. Although I feel like this might might still hurt her. No, we shan't. Even now, they toil away at the source. We must save them before it's too late. I really hope Benedict remembers to save the Roselle in this run. If not, I'm going to be very disappointed in him. Alright, there's nothing else to do. We can't listen to this music anymore for now. Conclude exploration, and exploration, yes. It seems there's no one but us for the moment. There's no one here. No, there's not. We took everything from the Roselle. The peace they had is gone. Not even the scent of food or the laughter of children remains. There's nothing left. Coming back here? It has reminded me of the terrible wrong we have done. <sighs> My lord, I've spotted the bandits. Looks like Travis and his crew. I'll make my way over. Let the others know. Alright, Travis. What are you bringing to the table? 
Please don't bring anything too rough. The party faces off against Travis and his band of thieves so that Jerome and the others have a place to return to someday. You won't lay a hand on this village. This is the Wolfort Domain, and we do not look kindly upon bandits. Not you guys again! The feeling is mutual. Come to arrest us, have you? Or maybe... Did you come to snatch up the treasure before we could? No way! They couldn't have the same book as we do, could they? Shut up, you nitwits! We can't have them finding out about our latest steal from the Archive! Treasure? The Archives? And people say my voice carries. Once we get our hands on you, you're gonna tell us everything you know. <sighs> well, now that you know, we can't very well let you live. Are we dealing with enemy wise by the way something that i realized uh like a couple episodes ago actually is that that both travis and trish have lateral jump but i doubt that travis gets it because trish doesn't get lateral jump and that's that annoys me so much like come on you can't take that away from me like they they have it right there and it'd be so useful why'd you have to go and take it away from me Okay, but anyways, back to the battle. You have backwards toss, we know about that. On your guard, decreases damage taken when no allies are nearby. Okay, I don't remember if you had that, but that sounds a bit insane. The impeding strike, deal physical damage to enemies across three horizontal squares in the later turn. Okay, that sounds a bit a bit broken, don't you think, Travis? Charge for one turn, then deal physical damage to all enemies within range. A uh, range of two. Hmm, is it a diamond? I'm guessing it's a diamond chief. Okay, we're dealing with shadow stitching. Oh, oh my god, they all have lateral jump. You guys are the freaking worst. I think I think all of them have this in Trish's battle as well, but it still sucks that we don't, that Trish and Travis don't actually get this. Okay, so they got shadow stitching. And I'm guessing it's just specifically for this battle cuz you know, since it takes place in a hype, you know, uh an area with a lot of tall buildings and stuff, which still seems unfair to me, but whatever, I guess, right? Okay, we got shadow stitching, poison jab with oil. Wait, why do you have oil? I guess you have mages with fire or something, right? Uh, two shadow stitchings, two poison, three poison, three shadow stitching lord, four poison, uh, provoke, that sucks. Oh, fire mages, uh, healers with steel trap. I think I remember that from last time too. Which is so weird to me, but whatever. Uh, two... Was it two or... No, yeah. Just two healers. Uh, two mages. Wait, three mages? Three mages? Insane. What is wrong with you, Travis? Who... Who do you think you are? Putting freaking three mages? Three shadow stitching bow users? What is your deal? <laughs> what did I do to you? Okay, who's recommended? Oh, we got you at... Rudolph and Trish. Oh, this happened the last time we battled here as well. I think when we were fighting against uh, Talior and Rufus after we turned in the Rosal and they came to kill them or whatever. Oh my god, it's the same Excellent. setup, isn't it? I, oh my I god. Leave the battlefield to me. Oh my god, it's the same exact setup, if I'm not mistaken, that I got during that battle. I'm gonna put Eridor. And also gonna put Medina, although I really shouldn't, since I've been wasting way too many items as of late. Actually, should I put Arador or should I put Lionel? Because Lionel would be useful against these battle mages. But at the same time, <laughs> Lionel is not the type to survive um, multiple units. He does not have the same defense as um, Arador and Flanagan. This might be a bad idea, but I think I'm gonna put Lionel instead of uh, Arador. 
if you insist. Also, Lionel is really slow, <laughs> so I don't know how well this is going to work out, but let's hope for the best. All right, here's the strat we came up with. Right now, we got Lionel with Endurance Union and Resurrection Union, so he can hopefully take hits and if he dies, you know, survive. <laughs> He's going to be the main wall of this uh, plan thing we have right now. Although I do know that everyone has lateral jump one in this battle and can, you know, easily probably get up here. But he's still gonna be there as a wall and also to try and help us out with the mages and archers, hopefully. Uh, we're gonna have most of these guys over here go up here and try to deal some chip damage from a distance. Hopefully they can actually put in work. I guess we'll find out. Uh, Hiwaret's gonna stay mainly over here so she can hopefully blind some people. Uh, but aside from that, yeah, these guys are just gonna stay up here. They all have, uh, accuracy and strength bracelets because they're all archers and they need that accuracy and strength for sure. Uh, mainly Trish, Rudolph, and Huet, but you know, might as well give it to Archibald as well, although he has high enough accuracy for things. But yeah, that's the plan for the archers. We got Isana sitting here. She's going to go up here and hopefully deal some good spark damage. Aside from that, I don't know what else she's going to do. We got Grom over here. Hopefully she can aggro some people as well and, you know, evade attacks and things. Hopefully she can survive. Uh, we got Jen's here. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with you, but hopefully you do something. I guess we can have you set up traps up here so, you know, archers can't get on or something. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, then we got Medina. We gave her the movement bangle and resurrection earring so she can hopefully survive in case she dies. And also, you know, get around easier and get people the items they need. But aside from that, we should be good to go. So let's hope for the best and <laughs> see if we can win this battle. All right. Bring it on, Travis. Battle with the bandit Travis. The battle begins. Once we've captured you and your crew, you will tell us why you've come here. A little whelp like you catching us? <laughs> we, we wouldn't be very good thieves if it were that easy. <laughs> Allow me. These old bones. Make way. Oh, I forgot to mention, but it is it is kind of funny that we have um, you know, Trish recommended for this battle, all things considered. <laughs> Insist on taking our treasure, we won't show you any mercy. Hope you're ready. Yeah. We can resolve this peacefully. You need only tell us about the treasure. 
How mighty kind of you. But I still won't let you lay a single finger on our treasure.
Hope you're ready. You know I have you now. God, this is barely a scratch. No way am I giving up now. Sorry, I did miss one of those lines. So let's go back and see what he said. How mighty kind he is. Oh no, it was but not I that one. It was this one. Let you lay a single finger on our treasure. Come on, men! Give it everything you got. That treasure's ours for the taking. Okay, pretty short and sweet, I guess. I admire your tenacity. I take it the treasure here is well worth the effort. Oh my god. Die! Curse you! Dang it, Archibald. The one time we don't want you to land instant. I mean, well, yeah, instant death. You land it. <laughs> okay, so I was planning to just deal some final ship damage to Travis and get that final spoil over there, but. Oh well. Uh, I guess we got lucky slash unlucky with a 25% chance of instant death. Uh, but whatever. This battle wasn't too bad. Uh, thankfully, I feel like we got lucky a couple times landing the swift swift end on Archibald and got to finish off a couple of units earlier than uh, than intended, so that definitely helped out this battle. We also got lucky in that we were able to aggro most of the mages so we didn't have to deal with uh, fire damage. We also took care of the archers pretty easily and quickly with our own archers <laughs> since they kept on dealing consecutive uh, decent ship damage to them until we could take care of them. Then we also had Huet who was buying new people so we didn't have to worry about, you know, too much ship damage on our own end. The healers were a bit annoying this time around, but not, you know, as annoying as they rarely are where they heal like a whole bunch of HP <laughs> and keep just keep on prolonging the battle. We also thankfully only got aggro once by the aggro units and it was, uh, Groma, but somehow we got through that, thankfully. We also didn't use up any peasant panacea pellets, thankfully, although we kind of came close to a bit here and there with Lionel <laughs> and having to use them. But we made it through, and that's all that matter. The Deathless Run is still going, thank god. So, let's finally recruit the last unit we can recruit and see what he's got. Also, if you guys didn't notice, Trish was really putting in work in this as well. Well, all of the archers were, if I'm being honest. But mainly to me it felt like Huet, Triss, and Archibald. Rudolph was doing alright. I mean, Rudolph is a weird unit if I'm being honest. He's not terrible, but he's not incredible either. And his setup is weird. Like, he has potential to do damage, but not... Not like insane damage, like I guess Archibald maybe? And... I don't know. Arch uh, Rudolph is just in a weird situation, if I'm being honest. 
I'll probably cover that in the review video when, when I make that. Uh, but look at that, we got a, quite a bit of money, I'll take that. And some materials I, I guess I kinda need now since I'm about to get Travis. We can already kinda guess what Travis is, he's like some type of tank wrestler thing. So I guess let's see what that entails. Come on! I could do this all day! Just give up already, else I'll have to take your head. Sorry, but I won't be having either. I ain't even found the treasure yet. But why go to such lengths for it? For my girl, Trish. You mean the young lady who was with you before? She was forced to live a bandit's life because of me. Sure, we had our share of fun trashing things, but I never noticed till now that she never had a place to call home. Aww. That's that That's right here. That's why I'm getting all the treasure I can lay my hands on. I'm gonna make her a safe place to lay her head at night. Pretty selfish of you, if you ask me. You think I don't know that? I know it's selfish, but still, I, I can't give it up. Then let's make a deal. What sort of deal? We shall pardon you and your kin and allow you to work in the Wolfort domain. But in exchange, would you serve House Wolfort? I would like you to help us find the treasure in this village. <sighs> Frederica. I apologize for deciding this on my own. But if there is treasure to be found here, it may help the Rosellen. Depending on what we find, it might allow us to aid the Roselle or negotiate with Hyzant. And this guy could help us in a fight. Pity he wasted his strength on pillaging, though. I understand your wishes, Frederica. What say you, Travis? You want to help the Roselle? Aren't you the ones who turned him over in the first place? Yes. I know it is selfish, but... Oh my gosh. I too cannot give up. Parallels. Freaking love it. <laughs> you got me there. I concede. I'll do whatever you ask if you pardon my daughter and crew. And you have my word that every last one of them will quit the thieving business. Where's she at, though? You can't be serious, oh. Pa! Did you really think I'd just accept you devoting yourself to Wolfort for me? So you heard everything, huh? Then you understand. Understand what? Wasn't it your dream to become the best thief in Norzelia? It was, but that time's come and gone. After I became a father, I only dreamed of you living a normal life. And what about my dreams, huh? I don't want to have to worry about where I came from or how much money I've got. I just want to be free. I want it to be just like you, Pa. I'm sorry. I was selfish, Trish. I don't want to hear it, you old fool. You aren't going to go after her? No. She'll understand one day. She's a downright fool, but a good daughter. I was going to say father-daughter relationship goals, but all right. This is slightly different from from last time. Interesting. Now then, let's find us some treasure. I will say that this is kind of dissatisfying, if I'm being honest. Like, I'm assuming they're going to, you know, patch things off off screen and never mention it again. It's different from the other one and it's it's just so dissatisfying because we know they both care about each other deeply but why did they make the relationship feel so different from the other path like in the other one we saw that um her dad wasn't doing too well and that's why she wanted to keep on thieving thieving sorry so she can support him and help him out but here it's more like i just want to be free and do my own thing now and i mean like trish you don't have to be a thief to be free you can you can be free and and not be thieving around i do like how they highlight more of 
of Travis's perspective, I guess, of, you know, caring for his daughter and things. But we kind of already got that with the other one, so we couldn't just, you know, mend things in this one as well and, you know, make things better. Not just send it off with, you know, Trish leaving <laughs> things as it is for now. All right, last unit. Travis's aptitudes in battle. Utilize his sticky fingers to steal items from, oh, items from enemies. Deals damage while picking pockets. Packs powerful offensive abilities. So is he a thief as well? Just like Trish, but in a different way? Okay, let's go take a look real quick at this guy. Actually, let's look at him right now without any enhancements or anything. Okay, Travis, he's a boss apparently, That that's cool. Oh, he has most of his things right now, and some new things we didn't know about. Backward toss, deal physical damage to a single enemy and hurl them behind you. Okay, we know about that. Mug, deal physical damage to a single enemy and has a chance to steal an item. Okay, that's whatever. On your guard, decreases damage taken when no allies are nearby, which is really weird if I'm being honest. Like, I don't know how how good that is. <laughs> like, that's a weird one. Because normally you want all your units to be together so they can take care of each other. And if he's supposed to be like a tank, you're going to want him to be near your units protecting them. Not, you know, off and on doing his own thing who knows where. Impeding Strike. Okay, we saw this in his battle. Deal physical damage to enemies across three horizontal squares in the later turn. Interesting. Fortuitous follow-up. Chance to steal an item during a follow-up attack. That's really whatever. Steal back. Okay, now that's some good things for a tank. Decrease damage when being hit from behind. Okay, I can I can work with that. Okay, now let's take a look at you at the encampment. I forgot what his voice sounds like, so I'm I'm definitely not about to do a good job as talking as him. Oh, look at that! They look so cute together over here. I kind of don't like how they group together all the. All, all the, you know, branching path units over here. Like, look, there's Milo, there's Cordelia, and there's Trish and her dad. They could have they could have spaced it out a bit more, if you ask me. Also, don't get why Julia's just, like, sitting there right next to, to Milo, just staring at her during this whole thing. But whatever. I mean, everything else is spaced out pretty good, I think. Came all this way to say hello, did you? <laughs> Thank you kindly, my lord. I know we ain't always seen eye to eye, but that's all water under the bridge now. You've got my alle uh, allegiance? Alliance? No, allegiance. <laughs> and I won't let you down. That was a not his voice, but alright. Trish ain't always the easiest to deal with, but you can't bet I'll cut down- Wait, what? Trish ain't always the easiest girl to deal with, but you can bet I'll cut down anyone who tries to bat my my- Aw, that's a <laughs> my little girl. That's so cute. I'm curious what a noble like you can really do in battle, my lord. We might have been thieves, but we had our honor. We never steal from the poor. Aww. Okay. I'm guessing that's all he has to say. So, let's upgrade him real quick. So, he goes from boss to big boss. Ooh, okay. He gets trials by fire. Increases your strength when on a square that is set ablaze. Oh my god. Why, though? <laughs> Like, I get it, it's supposed to be like, you know, works well with uh, Trish or whatever, but that's... That makes him, like, such a... He's supposed to be a tank and you want him to be on fire. And you want him to be alone, too. Like, what is this? What is this? Hopefully his weapon makes up for for all of this. Use Metal of Valor to change class to Big Boss, yes. Think I should have gone easy on him? Okay, what do you have to say now that you're promoted? Lately, it feels like I've got even more power to spare than usual. My crew always says I should think about my age, but it's just a number, and I hate numbers. There's only one boss around these parts, and that's me. I ain't about to lose to anyone, least of all some kids who think they know better. Haha. <laughs> I'm telling you, my lord, I'm just gonna keep getting better and better. Whenever you need me, just say the word. Alright, time for the weapon upgrades. What do you got to work with? Uh, Travis. I <laughs> forgot your name for a second there. Uh, weapon up. That's cool. HP up. Cool. Defense up. Magic defense up. And luck. So you go from Thief's Cudgel to Spiny Cudgel.
another weapon damage up. More HP. And do we want mug damage up or backwards? Ooh, minus the, okay. Let me take a look at it, at the damage of a mug. Because if it has good damage, then I might, you know, raise the damage of that. Oh, 263 damage. If I do backwards toss, it'll be one less TP. But how many times do you think you'll want to put people behind you? I don't think you ever want to do that as a tank. Okay, last thing you get here is luck up two. Now for your final upgrade. Crow's Cudgel. Use required materials and... Oh wait, sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I read that. Interesting weapon. Oh. Oh, I forgot. I'm out of... Oh my gosh, he gets fire resistance by 50. Never mind. Set yourself on fire, my guy. That's incredible. Oh, that's so good. We have someone else who can actually take a fire hit now. That's one of the best things we can have. Since a lot of enemies like to set things on fire for some reason. It also would have been nice to get someone with, you know, electric resistance, but whatever. Aside from, you know, um, I think Izana has it, maybe. Oh, I forgot to mention, in that battle we also got lucky in that Hewitt actually, actually landed a blinding arrow on, on Travis and actually blinded him. Which is insane. Because he was blinded for like four turns. And we also delayed his turn with a uh, gem, so that came in clutch. That was a nice uh, combo between those guys. Grum also did a good job in that battle evading a lot of attacks. So good for her. She's been a pretty good unit recently, if I'm being honest. Actually evading attacks and, you know, not getting in trouble. Okay, let's get the weapon damage up. Fire resistance up. Hello. And I need 11 more timber. Alright, final upgrade. Heavy smash. Charge for one turn, then deal physical damage to all enemies within range. Eh, that's... Eh. Let's see how much damage it does, actually. It might be good. I mean, charging for one turn on a on a physical, physical attack is not, you know, incredible. Because enemies can probably get away in the amount of time it takes you to use that. Unless you use, like, a use, uh, Medina's speed-up thing, like, Act Now thing, or Benedict's thing, or, you know, in tandem. But all of those, you know, cost DP or material. 366 damage. Eh. I mean, it's almost about the same as, as Backwards Toss, so it's alright, I guess. What was his fire thing again? Did it raise his strength? That's so good. I just need to put him in terrain where he's on fire. And I think he should be good. Well, actually, it's kind of mid if I'm being honest. Because he doesn't have any of the defensive abilities that like Eridor or Flanagan has. Actually, how how do his defenses compare to, to Eridor actually? I don't think he has anywhere near the same defense, does he? He has 56 strength and 52 defense. Oh, that is nowhere near, I think. Oh, yeah, that is that is nowhere near, my guy. Oh, no. Nowhere near. How about HP? Eh, okay, your HP is good. Uh, do you at least have the same defense as Lionel? Because if you're the same as Lionel, that that's n understandable, I guess. Oh, you're, you're still below his defense. How about your magic defense? Oh, it's actually higher than his. Okay. Oh, no, it's just, just one point higher. Okay, interesting unit. I can't really use him as a tank if I'm being honest, because he doesn't have the defense that's really necessary for that. I can semi-use him as a tank, but he also doesn't have aggro, and he can reposition enemies, which isn't really that good. If we put him on fire, he can deal some decent damage, damage probably, but is it worth it at that point? Because, I mean, you're still going to be taking at least a little bit of ship damage, I imagine, even with a... 50% resistance to fire, and that stacks up over time, unless you give him like full fire resistance, but then you won't be able to give him like a resurrection earring or I don't know, like a, a bangle of vitality. Actually, if you give him the bangle of vitality, that might counteract the, the burns, but even then it's so like, you have to get the right terrain and set it on fire and do this and that. He's a weird unit. I'll I'll see if I can use him in the coming battles and see what happens. Hopefully, hopefully he's pretty decent, hopefully. Uh, oh, actually, I need to talk about his ultimate, right? You've come at a good time, my lord. Learned something myself a new- wait, learned myself a new skill I did, sorry. 
If I find myself surrounded, I can just charge up Pal like so and... BAM! Hit him with a heavy smash. Pretty handy, ain't it? Always knew I had greatness in me. Okay, but with that, we can end off the episode. This has been an interesting episode, to say the least. Thankfully, the battle wasn't too tough, but it wasn't too easy either. It was a pretty interesting battle, if you ask me. Not incredible, nothing to write home about, of course, but still enjoyable. You know, you can have fun with that battle and strategize a bit differently from what I did, of course, and probably make it a bit more difficult for yourself and things like that. I don't know how I feel about Travis so far. I have very mixed feelings about his setup and things like that, but hopefully when I use him in the mines battle, which I'm guessing I'm gonna I'm gonna have to use him since he's the one I recruited this time around. Um, hopefully he puts in work in that. I don't think he will, cause it's a battle where we have to constantly move around and he's not very he doesn't have any real mobility aside from five movement, which is, you know, good movement for a character, but still, you know, things and stuff. Hopefully we can keep the Deathless run going and finish it in this route. But aside from that, I'll see you all next time when we'll finally be starting the end of the last route we have to do, the Benedict route. Look forward to that, because I already know it's going to be some type of roller coaster, from the story, to the battles, to the suffering trying to do the end, deathless run, sorry, to trying and use Travis, I'm guessing, in whatever battle he may be recommended, hopefully he is recommended for that matter. Hopefully we can soon finally bid farewell to Triangle Strategy, until I make the review video, that is. But anyways, one last time, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, uh... Hopefully by next episode we'll have unlocked uh, Travis's character stories and we can watch that before we start the episode. Okay, for reals now, bye! You know what I just remembered? I forgot that we get a unique cutscene with the, with the, uh, Travis, so let's watch that real quick. And I guess after that we'll finally end off the episode. <laughs> oh, sorry. It should be mostly the same, right? But. You know. So this book is going to help us find the treasure. That's right. We found it stuffed into the deepest, darkest recesses of the S. Frosty archives. My thieving senses tell me it'll lead us to incredible treasure. S. Frost's most confidential information is stored in the archives. There is definitely something of import in there. Never thought I'd say this, but good steal. It wasn't easy, but I had to, for Trish. Sadly, it's locked up tight, and trust me, you won't be forcing that thing open. I see. It's sealed with powerful magic. Would we need another spell to counter the seal? There's probably a key that can open it. I suspected as much. It's probably somewhere in this village. What makes you say that? Take a good look at the cover and you'll see a map of Norzelia. Indeed, there is. If this is the Norzelia River, then this must be the Wolfort Domain. In which case, those jewels are right on... This village. Exactly. We came here because we thought we'd find a way to open it. Are you sure it's not just coincidence? It could be, but if it isn't... Then the key is in this village. And the treasure in this book must be related to the Roselle. Then let's search the village. Could I ask you to use your thieving senses to help us look, Travis? Course you can. <laughs> it's... What bandits like me do best. To think we would find such a thing while searching for a key. I had a taste and it's salt for sure. So what kind of rock is this? I do not know. It looks to be a crystal of salt. Or salt crystal, shall we call it? 
I want you to know I completely forgot about the salt crystal. <laughs> I forgot that since we turned in the Roselle, we never learned about the salt crystal. Oh wow, this is insane. Oh, this... Okay, this kind of changes things. Did we... Actually, does it change things? Did we ever give the salt crystal to Hyacinth in the other runs? I don't think we did in one of the runs. I know we did in the Roland run for sure, because, you know... Freaking... Freaking Roland. But, wow. This is... This is new and different. <laughs> Good thing I came back to record this, <laughs> and I didn't completely forget about it. Even if you condense the salt from the source, it would not take this shape. It must have come from a different place entirely. Hold it. You mean to say there's salt outside of the source? If that were true, it'd change Norzelia as we know it. I wonder if the Roselle knew. I see. That may be why Hyzant imprisoned them at the source. They did it to keep their monopoly on salt. But what was a book showing its whereabouts doing in Esfrost? There is someone connecting all three. Esfrost, Hyzant, and the Roselle. My mother, Orlea. The leader of the Rosellan uprising. She escaped the source and founded this village. After that, she met the previous Archduke and gave birth to me. Could the key to opening this book be... my mother's pendant? It opened! So this was my mother's book. Pray, read it for us, Frederica. This is a legend handed down by the Roselle since times of old. It is the secret history of Norzelia. I, Orlea Roselle, am recording the legend here as the last keeper of these histories. Wait, is Roselle their last name? <laughs> Did I not realize this until now? Did I never look at Jerome's name? Really? <laughs> Again? I did this before with the <laughs> with Hyacinth and... Actually, I, I still don't know about Hyacinth, but I did this with S. Frost. Like, Frederica's last name is S. Frost, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, now I know. I, I'm guessing all the Roselle's last name is Roselle, right? Since it's Orla Roselle, apparently. In ancient times, the Roselle lived in Centralia, a land to the distant south of Norzelia. It sat on the shore of the sea, a source that extended to the horizon and beyond. It was said to be a paradise, a place where people never wanted for salt. I could skip this, but I do love me some lore, even if I've already seen it before. Especially Roselin lore. And especially... Uh, I think this is... Is this the Goddess Smiles or is this the Diary of Orla? I already forgot. I think this is the Diary of Orla, the theme, if I'm not mistaken. And I love me this music. The Roselle knew more about salt than anyone, for it was a part of their everyday lives. In those days, Norzelia still rested at the bottom of the sea, but a cataclysm brought it to the surface, turning it into land. The sea dried up, and the small portion that remained is what we know today as the Source. Eventually, many people migrated to the new land of Norzelia. They waged war over the Source, wishing to get their hands on its precious salt. Our ancestors came to Norzelia in hopes of putting an end to the fighting. They knew that the salt still remained, even without the sea. It merely crystallized and sank deep into the earth. After all their searching, 
They unearthed a giant crystal. No, a very pillar of salt. They showed it to the people of Norzelia, told them that salt could be found beneath their very feet. However, those who had seized control over the source sought to reign over all of Norzelia by controlling the salt. They, the holy state of Hyzant, attacked and slaughtered the Rizal. They hid the pillar, erased the existence of salt crystals, and imprisoned the surviving Rizal at the source. Thus we were branded sinners, criminals who wanted sole dominion over the land's salt. To justify their own monopoly, Hyzant created the goddess's teachings, but she needed a villain. To this very day, the Rizel are scorned, made to shed blood and tears, all in her name. But the goddess herself is proof of the Rizel in legends. I saw it with my own eyes during the uprising. Inside of her statue is the pillar of salt that was taken from our ancestors. But I could not expose the truth of the goddess. It took everything I had just to get a fragment. But that piece is the key to freeing the Rizel. It must be. For my brethren who continue to suffer for a crime they did not commit. The Holy State's teachings are false. The Goddess's blessings spread across all Norzelia. The blessing of the true Goddess. The blessing that shall be the key to the chains that bind our people. Jerome spoke these words before. Lady Orlea's words. Yes. The blessing my mother spoke of was the salt crystal. And the false teachings referred to salt existing outside the source. It would be the key to ending Hyzant's monopoly on salt. This has the power to change Norzelia as we know it, but it is not something we can recklessly proclaim. But I cannot forgive Hyzant. They rewrote history with their false doctrines and continued to oppress the Rosel, all to maintain their power over salt. Serenoa, do you think we could free the Rosel with this information? We would need conclusive evidence. Right now, all we have is a salt crystal. We would not be able to prove that more salt lies beneath the earth, or even the truth of the goddess's statue. I don't care how much time it takes. Can we not find out the truth? House Wolford is currently under the banner of Hyzant. We may be branded as rebels if the Holy State deems our actions as defiance of the goddess. I know it is a reckless request, but my mother has given us a chance with this book. I cannot simply let it pass me by. I understand how you feel, and the responsibility of House Wolfort to the Roselle. Please give me some time to think, Frederica. Of course. I believe in House Wolfort. And in you, Saranoa. I should like to speak to Benedict and Roland about the book as well. Let us return to the capital. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> I zoned out for a bit. I was like just half listening to everything <laughs> since I already seen it before. I was just waiting for any new Travis dialogue, but didn't get any more, unfortunately.
Roland, Benedict, and Frederica. Oh yeah, this. Oh, we gotta skip this whole thing. Oh, this is gonna take forever. Oh my god, there's so much to skip. <laughs> no wonder we had episodes that were just filled with, with dialogue. I've done this so many times now that it made me realize there's so many, there's so much dialogue in this game, and it, and you can't skip everything. Some of the times you have to just speed through it and, <laughs> and hope it goes by quickly. Sometimes you can't skip it, but even then, it's still a hassle to skip through everything. Like, Lord, why do you, why do you have so much dialogue triangles, Raiji? I'm not actually complaining, if I'm being honest, because that dialogue is, you know, pretty important to the story and everything. But when you're trying to get, get through everything as quickly as possible, it really doesn't help out that you have to skip through, like, four scenes of dialogue. Just speed up and skip, speed up and skip, <laughs> speed up and skip. Okay, but enough complaining. Uh, I once again, for like the fifth time now, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time for real this time. Bye!